Now let's talk about inventory turn rates. And, and it may help to know that, you know, I've been in the buy here, pay here business now for, uh, what is 23 years, I guess, at the time of this recording. And uh, so, you know, I started in 97. Before that, I was in the franchise car business for a time. And before that, I was in the retail and sporting goods business. The reason that's important as it relates to inventory turn rates is because I was familiar with inventory turn um, you know, and, and the reason that becomes important in any business. And so now in buy here, pay here, one of the things that's really important to recognize about buy here, pay here, and we talked about this a little bit in other sessions, but it's important to recognize that in buy here, pay here, we have the opportunity to turn our inventory much faster than a, a typical retail sales operation would or even a franchise operation. So it's common in the retail space, for example, that uh, a dealer might carry a 60 car inventory to sell 30 cars a month, okay? So roughly carrying double the inventory that they would expect to sell. In buy here, pay here, that's very different. And the reason that's different is because if you think about the consumer that we serve, and I, if I've got a 20 car inventory and I've got some four door cars, I've got some crossovers, and I've got maybe a few trucks, then odds are most consumers that come forward, they're just asking for help, they've got credit trouble, they're trying to find somebody to help them into a car, uh, you know, with $800 down or whatever the case may be. So typically, I can find a car within my inventory that will satisfy that consumer. So it becomes a lot less about selection in our line of work at buy here, pay here than it does in a traditional retail lot. If you think about a retail lot, customers in there with some credit, they've got the ability to buy, you know, lots of different places. So they're, they're holding out for, you know, that truck with leather seats or they're holding out for, you know, four wheel drive or something that's got the DVD entertainment system, right? So that's what's different about their line of work. That customer's more, uh, particular and they require a bigger selection in order to meet the needs of that consumer. We don't have that in buy here, pay here. Uh, certainly there are exceptions, but the rule is that our customer who we serve in buy here, pay here, they come to us needing help and they're, they're just trying to find somebody who will help them in their credit circumstances and provide them some, some decent wheels and, and support you know them after the sale. So that means in buy here, pay here, we can typically meet the needs of the consumer with a much smaller inventory and we've got dealers who, no kidding, turn their inventory three, four, six times monthly. So, you know, we've got, we've got a dealer that uh, it comes to mind always when I think about inventory turn rates that, you know, they'll, they'll sometimes close, they have two small sales locations and they may close the month with uh, 10, 12 cars on each lot, yet they sell 100 cars a month out of the two locations. So, you know, whether that's 60 in one or 40 in the other, doesn't matter. They're basically turning through 100 cars a month in a very small inventory. So how is that possible? Well, they've got a pipeline. They own a lot of other cars that aren't available for sale on the retail lot. So generally speaking for our conversation here today, we all understand we have dollars tied up in cars that are in the pipeline. So that will always be the case. So for a dealer to turn their inventory over three times a month, let's just take an example of having a 20 car inventory and thinking about selling 60 cars a month out of that 20 car inventory. That means that when, when holes are empty, when we sell a few, we have to be able to bring a few back in in their place and we have to keep that pipeline in motion. So that's really about efficiency. It's about having a good process where we can make judgments on cars, get them turned around quickly. We talked about that a little in other sessions, but the key is to get it turned around quickly, fill the holes, make sure you've got a good cross section of inventory, a good representation and a good mix of inventory that will meet the typical needs of the typical consumer. And now we'll have a chance to hit those kind of turn rates. Now we create this sort of urgency because inventory is always fresh. Imagine what it's like if, if I'm a consumer, I bought from you and I'm making a payment every other week and I prefer to make my payment in person and I come in and I see, you know, a minivan that, hey, I know somebody that I work with is looking for a minivan. I'll tell them, you know, that you've got this. And then the next time I come in, it's gone. Right. And so what, what happens that that makes me realize that if I see something I like or if I tell a coworker, you know, that that they've got a minivan, you better get down there because they turned their, their stuff over pretty quickly. That means your inventory is fresh. It's not sitting out there on the lot rotting and collecting dust and deteriorating of the tires and all those kinds of things. Inventory is moving. It's always fresh. That creates a good sales environment that energizes your sales team. So there's just a lot of benefits associated with getting that inventory to turn over. Keep it fresh. Um, keep it moving through, and that also lets us optimize our real estate. It lets us get by on a fairly small space and be able to really produce a lot of revenue 
out of that uh, smaller space. So we're big believers in turning the inventory over a lot. And that just means you got to be prepared to, to let it go, keep it moving, uh, don't get too attached to the inventory. I've jokingly said, you know, we don't buy the cars to hold down the asphalt. We got to keep them moving, get them, get, get them sold through there and replace them and keep that pipeline moving. And now you can really begin to turn over. And by the way, the actual calculation on the turn rate, you know, can be kind of complex. Some people would prefer to look at dollars over units. My experience is they come out fairly close, but you know, generally speaking, when we're talking about just think in terms of units and think about uh, uh, striving to turn your inventory over, at least what you have on display on your lot at any given time, try to strive to turn that over two to three times monthly and you'll have a very successful business.